a bit, I'm going to show images of MR signs of intracranial hypotension because intracranial hypotension can give an image similar to a Chiari malformation with so-called sagging of the brain, which means that the content of the posterior fossa is displaced inferior because of low intraspinal pressure. And this leads to low-lying cerebellar tonsils, flattening of the pons, and an abnormal morphology of the midbrain and pons. And after treatment and restoring the intracranial pressure, this pattern normalizes. It is important to realize that the intracranial pressure is higher in adults than in children, and in children higher than in infants. And the intracranial pressure is determined mainly by the pressure of the CSF, and it's not static but pulsatile following the heart cycle. I'm focusing on the intracranial hypotension, which is in the majority of cases caused by a spinal CSF leak. So imaging of the spine with high resolution T2 weighted images is important. And these CSF leaks can be categorized into three major causes. There might be a bony spur on the vertebra leading to a tear in the dura and the formation of an extradural CSF collection, as you can see in this patient. The leakage might be at the level of a nerve root cyst, or there may be a true fistula between the CSF and the venous system. Intracranial hypertension is the opposite of intracranial hypotension. And I'm not going to go into detail about that one, because the pathogenesis is much more complex. It probably has something to do with the glioneurovascular unit, so the glymphatic system and the acroporin 4. It occurs more often in patients that are obese because of the high intra-abdominal intra pressure. There's also a high central venous pressure and therefore a higher intracranial pressure and the signs of intracranial hypertension are the opposites from intracranial hypotension. So in intracranial hypertension there is an excess of CSF in the optic nerve sheet with flattening of the globe and flattening of the pituitary with an appearance of an empty cella whereas in intracranial hypertension potential that we're going to focus on now. There is loss of normal CSF in the optic nerve sheet and there might be subdural effusions besides the sagging of the brain that I mentioned earlier. And if you restore the pressure and you find a CSF leak or give a epidural blood patch, it resolves and then there is in the same patient also CSF in the optic nerve sheet again, and resolution of the subdural effusions. This is an overweight 69-year-old female who presented with hyperprolactemia after getting a shunt for intracranial hypertension. And on MRI you can see that there is a convex border of the pituitary and sagging of the brain, so there was overdrainage and signs of intracranial hypotension. And after adjusting the shunt, the pituitary and the sagging of the brain normalized. If you don't have much experience with looking at images of the posterior fossa, doing some measurements might be helpful because in patients with intracranial hypotension, there are several abnormalities. For example, the angle to so the pons and the midbrace, so the pontomesencephalic angle, decreases. There's 
a smaller distance between the mammillary bodies and the pons in patients with intracranial hypotension compared to normal patients. And there is a different angle between the lateral ventricles, but this difference is not significant. And you might also see if you do post contrast imaging in patients with intracranial hypotension because of the dilation of the vessels, pachymeningeal enhancement, as you can see here, and sometimes there's also a convex border of the venous sinuses, and the pronounced pachymeningeal enhancement in intracranial hypotension is mainly seen in the acute phase. In the chronic phase, it's more the sagging of the brain, the pituitary, the optic nerve sheet, and the other signs that I mentioned. So to conclude, I want to make a bridge to the next vlog in which we are going to look at the pachymeninges and the leptomeninges and the enhancement of the meninges.